Hey, welcome everybody. This is Scott Davidson and I'm the business development manager for McNeil. And today we're going to take a look at uh, Rhino, Grasshopper and working with Direct Link with Twin Motion. We're excited to work with Twin Motion on this. We really think it's going to enhance your process of, of design and visualization, tying the products much closer together. Uh, but before I, I look at the details of the Direct Link, um, let's just quickly look at how Rhino and Grasshopper are being used in the AC industry. For those who might not be familiar with it, uh, Rhino is used really for two things, uh, freeform fabrication and parametric design. Uh, this is a good example where this is a Rhino and a Grasshopper model uh, done by MeBJ. And so as you, uh, as Grasshopper will be as it works, uh, if you change the inputs to this, the number of leaves change, the shape, the angles, the form, the number of seats, all those things change in the model. And you can explore many different designs. Uh, now, the nice part is, is as you get closer and closer to fabrication, then you can use Rhino 2 to break this shape down into uh, uh, components, beams uh, that you can fabricate from. And uh, so Rhino is used to, in that case for both. You'll see this theme many times with Rhino models. They have to do with complex form, uh, unusual shape, and then using Rhino to break those down, not only explore that shape, but break those down into shapes that you can fabricate from in an accurate way. Uh, this is a little older design, uh, but in this case, they're using Rhino to uh, develop uh, shape and form in an accurate way to recreate uh, uh, building in a model that uh, you know they have plaster casts for and, and old sketches and things like that. So they use Rhino to get to these complex shapes and forms. Rhino is also a grasshopper a lot is used to build uh, complex form and shape in terms of a, in this case a, a building or a high rise, and uh, then you can use grasshopper to change the different inputs and look at different designs, not only in a form way but also, for instance, from a usage, uh, occupancy loads, uh, square footage, uh, revenue, all those can be looked at at design time. So as you're making changes, you can make informed decisions about various aspects of the design. Another example of this is uh, KPF, and uh, what they use it for is uh, they'll go through and, and make these uh, very quick iterations uh, using Grasshopper, and then Grasshopper is coming back with information like how, what are the views, uh, what's the daylight loads, uh, what's the value per square footage, um, what to, you know, what's the revenue that can be based on that. All of those things can be looked at at design time in order to uh, explore different options. But what we're here today to talk about mostly is Rhino and Twin Motion and how you can work together with them. So I'd like to look at a few aspects in Rhino uh, when you're getting ready to go to Twin Motion that you might want to think about and look at. And so what I have here is a pretty standard building in Rhino. Uh, it's, uh, you know, a, a straightforward building with a freeform roof. And the first thing we want to look at is um, materials. So what's important about this is that there are materials assigned to this in Rhino to this building. And I can just quickly jump in here to the rendered view. And you can see we have different materials uh, and, uh, you know, glass and things. What's important to Twin Motion isn't necessarily the properties of these materials. What's important is the name. And so in this case, I've assigned these materials by layer. And so those names will be replaced when they go to Twin Motion with Twin Motion materials. And so you can use Twin Motion's advanced uh, materials to populate this scheme so that you can when Martin gets to looking at it, get to a much more advanced uh, a rendering that you can work on. Now, another thing that we can, uh, it's important to understand is that the environment that we're in in Rhino doesn't really matter. Um, Twin Motion is going to have its own environment, so don't worry about sun and, and the environment and things like that. You know, let Twin Motion take care of that. Another thing that we can do 
or should be prepared for, we can use to our advantage, is uh, twin motion will replace objects in the Rhino scene if we want it to. So you can put placeholders in the Rhino model, in, in this case a person, but another place it's used a lot is let's say for vegetation, for cars, for different things like that where you can put a simplified object in Rhino, and then when it transfers over to Twin Motion, Twin Motion will, uh, will replace those with its objects. And Twin Motion has a lot of um, ways of optimizing a model for rendering and for walking around it and for VR. And that optimization will take place uh, when you transfer it over. It uh, makes it a lot faster, it makes it a lot easier to walk around it, and it makes it a lot easier to have a much more complex model and keep your performance up. Mainly using to, uh, mainly used, uh, looked, or uh, yeah, mainly because of its gaming engine background. And uh, and so that's something that, that, that this direct link will do automatically. I think it's important to note a little bit that, that if you're gonna do uh, glass, you wanna do a single pane of glass. Uh, in Rhino, and uh, Twin Motion can take care of that for you, or you know, use that as their glass. Um, and it's not really the Twin Motion isn't going to be as sensitive to detail as as Rhino is in terms of of uh, the model. And I think that's somewhere where some place where the 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 swapping of objects, the replacing of items, is really going to help. So. Those are a couple things to look at when, or think about when you're getting ready to go to Twin Motion. And I'm going to have uh, Martin now take over this, and he can show you uh, the details and the process within Twin Motion to make this rendering final. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Scott, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Martin. I've been working in the Twinmotion team for around seven years now. I will be your host for this Twinmotion presentation today. Um, so the idea is that I will import this file inside Twinmotion um, and just create a couple of images, just showing you the some tips and tricks and how to use Twinmotion from a blank project. So after you imported the file, until a final render. So first off, when you want to synchronize your Rhino file inside Twinmotion, you will need to download the DirectLink plugin. You can find that in the Epic Games launcher. So let me just open the Epic Games launcher. I will come under the Twinmotion tab. And at the end of the, this window over here, we have the Twinmotion plugin button. When you click on it, it will launch a web page, and at the bottom left of this web page, you will find a link to download either the Windows or macOS version of the add-in. It's the latest version over here. Once you download it and install the Direct Link plugin in Rhino, at the top of the screen in the ribbon over here, you will see a new option, Twinmotion 2020. When you click on it, you have a couple of options. Uh, the help will send you to the online help where you will find some helpful resources when you are getting started inside Twinmotion. In the option, we have some interesting stuff. So actually the most important thing is the merge option. By default, we merge by materials when you import a project inside Twinmotion. That means that, for example, in this project, if all the walls are sharing the same material, all my world will be collapsed as one big object. So it's really a matter of performances. Um, Twinmotion can handle millions of polygons, but not millions of separate objects. So usually we, we tell the user to choose the collapse by material, the merge by material option, which will uh, have some better performances, especially for people that don't have like a high end uh, gaming type of graphic art. You can also, of course, choose the no merge option and you will keep the hierarchy of your file, or you can also uh, choose a merge by layer. So today I will be using the merge by material option. Here, the, substitu the substitution, sorry. Uh, so what it do, uh, basically, if you have set up a glass material inside Rhino, when you check this, it will be automatically replaced by a twin motion glass material. Same thing for the, the concrete or different kind of material. So we have 
we have created basically a conversion table that takes some material that we have in Rhino and we replace them automatically by tune motion materials. And then we have some other options, for example, in the uh, optimization tab, we can exclude a small object if you don't need like screws or stuff like that inside your perspective. So let's just click on OK. And um, now, if you want to visualize this project inside Twin Motion, it's just one click on the Synchronize button. It launches automatically Twin Motion if it's not already launched. You can choose an existing project if you already imported this file and you're just refreshing uh, the Rhino project. But here I will start a new project. It's importing the data, and as you can see, it's quite fast. Um, it's a small project, but it's still it's just a couple of seconds to, to load the data. First thing I want to do uh, is maybe change the time of day. So I will come to the upper right of the screen, click on my eye, and the first option I have here is the daytime. So here I can start to play with the time of day of my project. So we have some nice sun coming towards the, the facade. Now, as you can see here uh, in Rhino, I just had the, the building itself with the, the small terrain, but I also created a small context around the project. So TuneMotion supports the direct link plugin like we have uh, showed with, uh, with Rhino, but you can also import manually file uh, directly inside TuneMotion. So I'll come under uh, the import doc over here. I will click on the import button. I will click on open and look for my project. And here I will import my uh, context. Um, don't need to check the option right now. I'll just click on OK. And here I just imported my file. As you can see here, while I was using the Direct link plugin, some of the material has been replaced by Twinmotion materials. But here through the FBX, uh, I just added a basic, um, basic color on my geometry and I received inside Twinmotion this basic color. So maybe it's time to add some materials to the project. Uh, Twinmotion comes with a native library of thousands of objects and materials. You can find this library on the left over here. We click on the arrow to open the library. And we'll start with the materials library. Open the material library. We start with the ground, nature. If I want now to add a grass material to this green color, it's just a basic drag and drop from the library to my viewport. As simple as that. I want to have the same uh, color on my two terrain, on the imported terrain and on the terrain uh, that came through the direct link plugin. So we're just selecting this grass material and I will add it to this mesh. So I don't even see uh, the separation between the two geometry. I can add a couple of more material to my project. Uh, let's start by the roof. I will come to the metal folder and I will just drag the brushed aluminum like that. Here on the wall, we have a concrete that has automatically been replaced with these uh, nice tiles that have some parallax, but it's not the look I want for my project. Uh, let me actually add some metals to the millions. I will come back now and enter the concrete folder, and I will just drag a concrete materials to my facade, like that. Same thing on the inside, I can come here, drag and drop that. We can add some polished concrete on the roof, on the, on the floor as well. And when you add um, materials to um, your project, it's automatically selected in the dock that we have at the bottom of the screen. The dock is basically where you will find all the options, the tools, and the settings. And here, my polished concrete is still selected. So I have a few options regarding these specific materials. So for example, I can click on the color tab here, and I can change the color of my material, making it darker or lighter. I can also change the reflection, making it completely rough or completely reflective. I can even change the scale of it. So now maybe it's time to add some vegetation. Uh, let me now 
come back in my library uh, and enter the vegetation and landscape folder, trees. If I want to add a tree to my project, it's fairly simple. I will just select the tree I want, and I will just simply drag it from the library to my viewport, as simple as I when I drag it some materials to my project. So it's just a simple drag and drop from the library to the viewport. Now if I want to add some tree a bit quicker, in Twinmotion we have what we call the multi-drop tool. So basically what I will do is click on one item, I won't be using the drag and drop, I just one click uh, with the left click under the mouse, and now the object, the tree, is under my mouse. And now at each time I will click in the viewport, Twinmotion will add this object to my project. Since it's a tree, it will take a random rotation, a random scale, and a slight color variation, so hopefully you won't see any repetition, like we have here. So using the multi-drop tool, as you can see, you can quickly vegetalize, quickly add some tree to your project. You can also do that with a multi-selection. So for example, I will select one tree in my library, and holding the control key, I will select two other trees. All those three now are under my mouse, and Twinmotion will randomly select one of them and add it to the project at each time I will click inside my project. So again, I will just click a couple of times, and as you can see, it's completely randomized. So it's a quick way to add some vegetation. Still, my project is quite big, especially the, the terrain surrounding it. Uh, so if I want to add some vegetation quicker, in Twinmotion we have two different tools. Let's enter the context doc. Here is the two tools. We have the vegetation paint tool and the vegetation scatter tool. Let's start with the vegetation paint tool. Here we've just opened this doc. We have a drop box here where you need to drop some trees. So we'll start by dropping, for example, the London plain and some oak like the, this one over here. Now I will select my brush and I can now start to paint my tree directly on my terrain, as simple as that. I can use a bigger brush, so by default it's 10 meter, but you can have a really bigger brush to paint tree a bit quicker. If you think that we have a bit more density, you can come back to the density. So I can select the tree, for example, let's select two those two trees, and here I will check and change the density on the fly. To add tree even quicker, the final tool that we have inside Twinmotion is this scatter tool. Same process here, I will drop some tree in my drop box, uh, the same tree, so the London Plain and the Turkey Hawk. I will select those two trees, I will select my scatter tool, and I will now just one click on my terrain to add the tree all around the terrain, all around the place. So as you can see here, it's a really quicker way to add some vegetation. It have added the tree all around the terrain, but there is some chance, since the terrain is going beneath my project, there is a chance that we have some tree in the middle of the house. So what I will do now is um, either I can remove the tree using the scatter remove tool that will remove slowly some of the tree randomly, but I can also use my uh, vegetation eraser tool to just remove the tree surrounding my house. So now we have all the tree around our project, maybe it's some time to add some grass. Right now we just add this flat uh, texture on the, on the surrounding, on the, on the floor. So to do that, I will use the same kind of vegetation paint tool. Here, but now I'll use some grass, I will come back inside my library and enter the grass and flowers folders. We'll start with some wild grass. Uh, we'll use maybe a smaller brush, like this one over here. And here, let's start by uh, painting this grass surrounding the house. So I'm just doing that pretty quickly. I'm using a smaller brush um, near the house, uh, so I'm making sure that I won't be covering like the road or the, the project itself. And I will then use a bigger brush when I will have some large area to cover a bit quicker. 
So as you can see, we have uh, some um, green triangle that is glowing. It's actually where the grass will be casted. Because when um, the camera is moving away, uh, let me let me first start uh, by finishing this this grass. Now I can use a bigger uh, bigger brush just to fill this whole uh, field in front of the project. Yeah, now that's fine. So as you may have noticed over here, the grass is fading away when the camera is moving away. It's an optimization that we do inside the viewport. So basically we remove the grass when it's far away to gain some performances. But it's only really only in the viewport. When you will be exporting some images, this grass will be present uh, on all your images and all your videos. And, and what I wanted to say uh, by saying that is that the, the green triangle will help you to better identify where the grass is uh, brushed, where the grass is present inside your scene. So as you can see here, even if the grass disappeared, uh, you can still know that the grass has been um, scattered, has, has been painted all around the terrain. So now that we have some uh, our grass over here, I can add more density. So I can select my grass and add more density just by raising the density slider over here. I can also uh, add more things to my layers. So it's, it's a layer system. So you define an area and you can add more objects to this area. So for example, I will scroll to the bottom of my grass and flowers folders. I will drag and drop uh, this field scabious uh, flower. We select it, just changing the density to something like 1%. I think it will be enough for, um, for this project. Uh, actually, maybe not, maybe 5%. No, it's too much. Two. Let's stick with two. Can also add some white flowers like we have here. Maybe this one will be around. 5%. So it's adding a lot of geometry. So sometimes it might take some time to have the full effect. So you need to leave the, the software a few seconds to load all the, the grass, all the data. But here we have our, our new flowers. So in fix, it start to look great. Uh, what I would like to do, maybe add more flowers like the link hazer. So same thing here, just drag my flower over here and this one switching to 1%. Also at each time you go under 0% and come back to 1%, it randomizes the placement of um, the, the vegetation. So if you don't like how the vegetation is placed, you can switch to 0% and come back to 1 or 2 and the placement of the, the vegetation, either grass, bush or trees, will be uh, resetted. So I um, start to like that. Uh, maybe there is two more of this one, so maybe I will just remove this uh, link gather. Maybe it's time to um, create a camera. So we come to the media doc enter the image. I will click on the big plus button to create a new image. Um, I like to work with a more cinematic camera. So what I will do is enter the more, enter the option of this specific image, come to the camera settings. And here I will just switch uh, to a 50 millimeter focal to have something a bit, a bit more cinematic. Uh, let's come somewhere where we have some nice uh, lighting under the grass, like that. So here we just come back to my image and update the point of view, like here. In this specific image, I can also change a bit the time of day, so we have a better sunset, or actually it's, it's in the morning, but we have a better lighting on the project. Actually, uh, right now it's a bit empty in the street. So let's come in the street before we export this image. And let's check a few other options and tools that we have inside Twinmotion. <clears throat> uh, as you can see here, using the scatter tool, we still have some tree that has been planted in, uh, in the middle of the row. So here I'm just going to 
using my eraser, I remove some of those three, uh, like here. Now that's fine, and on the other side as well. Okay, that's fine. So first thing is adding some vehicles. I will come back again in my library, enter the vehicles folder, cars. If I want to add one car to my project, it's just a basic drag and drop from my library to my viewport. Here using the gizmo, I can change the orientation of my vehicle, so making sure it's placed correctly um, in the direction of my road. Now in my modeling tool, I place some box at each um, position where I want a car to be placed. I place some basic box, basic dummy, uh, because I want to show you uh, a tool that we have inside Freemotion. So I exported all my box as an FBX file, and now I will import my uh, dummy cars.fbx. In the option, I will just check the keep hierarchy option. If I leave the collapse by material option, what basically will happen is that all my box, since they have all the same material, all my box will be collapsed as one object, and I don't want that. I've placed correctly my box in my project, and I want to retrieve the correct pivot point of all those boxes. So I will switch to the keep hierarchy option, and I will click on OK to import my box. As you can see here, all my box has been imported uh, in, my, in my project, and the pivot point is correctly placed at the center of this box. So now what I will do is open the send graph, which is this panel on the right. It's basically a layer system similar to Photoshop. Here we have the layer, um, the add-in layer, which is the project we imported from Rhino. Here we have the layer, which is the context, the .fbx we imported. Then we have all the vegetation assets we have added to the project. And finally, at the end, we have even the different uh, paint and scatter uh, layer that we have created. Here, what I want to have a look at is the new dummy cars.fbx file that I just imported. As you can see here, I have all my boxes. What I would like to do with all those boxes is replace them all at once by some twin motion vehicles. So I will select the folder, I will right click on it and click on the replace object button. It has opened a new dock. Here I will, in this new dock I will just drop some vehicles, completely randomly just selecting some of twin motion cars. And what I will do now is just click on Start Replace. It will automatically replace all my box by some twin motion vehicles, which will be correctly placed in the good orientation uh, following the road. Now, for example, if I don't want um, this car to be this color, I can still select the vehicles and it have a selection dock. And here I can change the color to whatever I want. So this is the first way to add some vehicles. Now if I want to have some vehicles that are actually driving on the road, I will come to my context dock and I will now enter the pass tool. I will start with the vehicle pass, I will select my pen here, and I will just basically create a spline in the middle of my road. Something like that. I will leave a few seconds to load all the vehicles and all the character inside the vehicles. And that's it. It's Now we have this path that is animated, we have the wheel spinning, we have some characters in the cars that are also animated. Here in the selection dock I can uh, change a few options like changing the number of lanes and uh, here I just want to check the two lane option that will make sure vehicles are driving in both directions. And you can even change the density or the speed of the um, yes the density or the speed of the vehicles. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, next thing I want to show you is uh, the character. So coming back to the library, now I will enter the character folder. Same as the vehicles, we can add some characters one by one like that. All those characters are animated and they have different kind of animation. 
So when you select one character, the first option will be uh, the clothes. So you can change the color of the clothes. You can change the pose. So maybe he's in idle state, maybe he's sitting, maybe he's lying, maybe he's even dancing. And even after you choose a pose, there is a list of animation for each pose. So we have this dance or this one or this one. So you can add characters one by one like that, but we also have some groups. So for example, if I select this group of three people, at each time I will click, TuneMotion will randomize the three characters that are added to the project. So it's a quicker way to add some uh, life to your project. Finally, if you want to have some characters that are actually working inside your project, I will use the same kind of tool uh, that I use for the vehicles. So I will come to the path, and now I will use the character path. Select my uh, pen, same thing here, I just create a spline. And as soon as I release my tool, character will start walking along the path. So here I'm just going to remove uh, the people out of the way, so they are not uh, collapsing each other. So as you can see here, we have some characters walking, we can change the width of the path, we can change the density of people on it, so it's really a quick way to add some life all around your project. Let's stick with something a bit smaller, with less density, we are in a, in a calm neighborhood. So now we just added some characters, uh, let's come back to our media, so let's come back to the media image. I will click on image number one to come back to the media I was in. Uh, let me just reset the density of the white flower, I don't want to have that much white flower, yeah, something like that will be a bit better. Just going to refresh my camera point of view over here. So I kind of like this, uh, this point of view. So now what I would like to do is just directly export this image. So I'll come to the export doc. Here in the image, I will just select my image. If I have created multiple images, they will be listed uh, here. And I will click on start export. I'll send that to my desktop. By default, Tumotion export on a 2K resolution, but you can manually go up to 8K. And if I close that, here I have my image that has been generated in just a couple of seconds. So you can see it's fairly simple to create an image. It's as simple as that to create an animation. So let's, um, let's choose, for example, a new point of view, maybe an aerial view like we like here. Instead now of going to the image doc, I will come to the video doc. I will click on the big plus button to create a new video. And this is the starting keyframe, the starting point of view. So now what I need to do is move in the project and click on this small plus over here. So I just move inside my project, click on the small plus, and Twinmotion automatically creates the animation between the two different keyframes. So here I am in my movie number one, in my part number one. Now if I want to create a second camera with another point of view, we just need to move inside my project. We can come something like here. And now I will use this plus over here to create a new video part. Same thing here, I just move inside my viewport. I will click on this small plus to create a second keyframe in this specific part. And now I can start to visualize my whole video, which contains right now two different parts. We have this uh, aerial view like here, and then now it will switch to the second point of view over here. So it's fairly simple to create an animation inside Twinmotion. Of course, you can create any number of keyframes. So if I come to, back to this one, we can have this kind of drone view that is uh, going all around the project. I can pre-visualize the camera pass just by dragging this uh, pink line over here. I can also change the part length. So for example, I can select here by default, it's 10 seconds, but I can make this, uh, this part um, 
length a bit more long, like 20 seconds. So as you can see, it's fairly simple to create an animation. Uh, finally, just a couple of things I wanted to do in this specific shot is just to add a bit more life inside my interior. So I will keep the media mode. I will come uh, toward my project. First thing is a bit how to enhance the reflection inside Twin Motion. So I will use what we call the reflection probe. So basically what it does, it captures an image on the surrounding of your project, like we have here on the, the forest on the back, and it will apply this image onto my glazing. So it's give a nice reflection like here. I will also a bit lower the opacity of the glass so you can see a bit better inside the project. And I will just come inside and start to add some interior furniture to my project. It's really quick just to show you the kind of object that we have inside Twin Motion. So I'll come to the object folder. Here it's divided by type. So we have the home, which is the interior type of furniture. Then we have in the city everything from benches to bollard to street light. So today we'll check the interior furniture. We can start with the table. So here we can add a table uh, inside my living room over here. In the decoration, we can have some framing on the wall over here. Uh, let's add, for example, a shelf on this side over here. Here I can switch to the scale tool if I want my shelf, for example, to fit uh, my, my, uh, my wall to be a bit bigger. Uh, let's add some plants on the um, on the corner over here. So we are just adding, maybe not this one. This one is a bit too small. Um, like this one, this one, maybe this one. Also here, what I would like to do is uh, have some kind of cabinet. So I know that we have that inside the bedroom storage. I kind of like the, the basic one over here, but obviously I don't want all the, 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 the bedroom props that is on top. So what I will do is, uh, through my send graph, I will just select all the items that are on top of my, my uh, shelf, just remove them. Then I will just place correctly uh, my shelf, duplicate it to have a bigger shelf, something like that placing that against my wall. And to make sure uh, that it fits my, my interior, what I will do is using the material picker tool, I will select this wood material and I will apply this wood material on my two shelf to make sure that is belonging to the same kind of living room. I can also do that with my, uh, my shelf over here. So it's it's kind of good. We can also, if I want, for example, add some, uh, like, like adding a sofa on the corner over here. We can have some kind of uh, carpet on the, on the floor over here. I'm doing that pretty quickly. It's just to give you an idea of the possibility inside Twinmotion. Really, at the end also, if you have some question regarding the usage, the furniture, don't hesitate to ask all the questions that you can have uh, just uh, at the end after, the, after we end this presentation. So just a final touch will be maybe adding like yeah, a, small, a small table like here. So here yeah, I'm just adding some props, just so in my image, uh, we can see some stuff going inside the project. It's not like completely empty. So here yeah, I just took a couple of minutes to populate my living room. I won't bother you with uh, giving life to all the other room, but you get the idea. Twinmotion is filled with plenty of objects to, to start giving life to your project. So don't hesitate to have a look at all the different objects that we have inside the library. And if you don't find the object that you need, Twinmotion also have what we call the user library. So basically uh, how it works, so you import, you can import uh, any kind of object. Uh, Twinmotion supports plenty of different file formats like FBX, SKP, OBG, C4D, and, and some other. 
So you can import any kind of object uh, through the regular import process. And then this object, you can save it under your user library and you can then use any object from the user library and just adding to the project. So for example, here, I've been uh, creating this chair in, uh, in my uh, in 3ds Max and I just imported this chair from my user from 3ds Max as an FBX file and I just saved this chair in my user library so I can use it for every future project. So you can really create your own hierarchy of your of object directly inside uh, Twin Motion and have its you can also have this user library share around your network so you can uh, work with your colleague on the same library. So I think we have we are reaching the end of this presentation. Um, thanks everyone for watching. We didn't cover all the features uh, presented inside Twin Motion. It was really to give you a, a first a quick tour um, about what is Twin Motion, the, the capabilities, and how you can uh, have some fast results working inside Twin Motion. So here, in just like thirty minutes, I've created this this scene. So so yeah, if you enjoy. Um, Tell us <laughs> now. It's time for a, a quick Q and A session. So um, we'll we'll start by looking at the old comment, and we'll pick the the question in the in the order they arrive on the chat. So yeah, feel free to ask all the questions that uh, you have. Thanks everyone. Uh, if you don't have any question you want to leave, it was a pleasure. Also, um, the recording of this webinar will be sent automatically by email. It will be also be available directly on our YouTube channel in the upcoming days if you want to watch it back.